Len, to ask the question, did the universe begin, sounds simple. <laughs> what does it mean? What are the different kinds of meanings that that question has before we can even begin to say what are some of the answers? Ah, how does the universe begin? <laughs> That's an interesting question because in a way it presupposes the answer. Let me tell you what I mean. When we ask how something begins, we think about maybe something that we see in the present and we trace it back in time to a point where before which it didn't exist. And that, so that's the beginning. That assumes that time is the way we learn about it in school, which mm. is a linear, a, a number like a number line, and there's a zero, and then there's in front, uh, beyond the zero. But modern physics tells us that time isn't really like that. So that's a kind of a strange question. So when you go back in time, what, what we know is the universe, as we go back in time, was smaller and smaller and smaller. And we also know that all, as all the matter and energy get squeezed into the smaller parts of the universe, they start to affect each other through general relativity because it tells you that matter affects other uh, mm -hmm. affects space and time, which affects matter. And, and then you have to st start taking into account that time and space can get warped. And when you, when you get early enough in the universe, you also have to take into account quantum theory, which, which means that, that all the energy and fields of the universe are having fluctuations. And when you put all that together, those fluctuations, the effect of those fluctuations, mm -hmm. the, all the matter being tightly squeezed together, and the warpage of space and time, what you get is that time becomes so warped that it doesn't have the meaning that we think of it as having today. So it's not like a straight line. It's more like, let's say, a globe, where time is a longitude, line of longitude that goes around the globe. It curves. And, and as you get near the pole, it's hard to tell which mm -hmm. is what's east and mm -hmm. what's west. And time and space kind of get mixed together. And it doesn't really have a beginning in the way that we think of it. All right, so let's uh, try to run the movie back as far as we can to understand. It. How far back can you go before it, it begins to have this real weir weirdness? And how big is the universe at that point? Well, the, 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 we can go back with our theories of physics to uh, certainly we, we inflation, the period of inflation, for instance, where quantum uh, effects were important around 10 to the minus 33, 34 seconds, 32. So, and, so and, and in, in, in one part in, in, uh, of one second of a billion, 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 something. A millionth of a billion, yeah, yeah, right, something right, like right, uh, yeah. uh, uh, At yeah, least three billion part. Yeah. That, that's very, very far back, but, 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 but I'm, 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 I'm talking about inflation now because that is, a, a, that is a, a, a region of time where quantum fluctuations were important and, and where we have a theory that we can actually check by looking at the right. uh, microwave background radiation that permeates all of space. And we've, we've uh, made observations that, that support the theory. So we know that we're on the right track with that. Before that, we don't really know much. And before about 10 to the minus 43 seconds or so, uh, we know nothing because to look that far back, we need a theory of, of quantum, uh, a quantum theory of gravity. And we don't have a, a quantum theory of gravity yet. So we really can't say much. There's a lot of speculation about what goes on back there. So what does all this mean? It means that the question of the beginning of time is not really a well-posed question in physics because time itself doesn't mean anything when you go back that far. That, But you're still back to within the very small fraction of one second. And, and, right. and at that point, the universe is, is how big? Well, it, it depends when. It could be grapefruit. Yeah. I mean, what does that even mean? Yeah. But it's, it's a fruit-sized universe, yeah. you know? Right. And it depends exactly when, when, okay. when you go. But, but, but uh, and everything, our observable universe, yeah. that is, right. because we believe the universe is infinite. So, right. uh, but the observable universe that, 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 that we can see today, that, that light can still reach us, uh, that can affect us, is that size. And... When we go back that far, we know that we have to take quantum effects into account, and we know that time ceases to have its uh, current uh, understand uh, current uh, character. So we don't have a, a feeling for what time means. We don't have an intuition for what time even means, and that that we don't even have a theory at all. If you keep going, uh, that 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 we believe applies there. So we're not even sure what happens when we go back farther. So mm. that's the state of physics today. Uh, and how do you see progress? Do you see, do you see being able to to break that? Barrier to, to, to you need a you need a theory of quantum gravity to to go to back, back farther. Yeah. Physicists have a very bad track record of saying when they will 
break the barrier, right? <laughs> so so uh, I think it was uh, Lord Raleigh in the late 19th yeah. century said physics is basically all oh, done. Right. It's just getting more decimal places. Right. Uh, Stephen Hawking in 1980 said that uh, physics, uh, that we will, the physics is not done, but we will have it done by the turn of the century. Right, right. Um, I asked him uh, a, a few years ago, uh, what, what, he, what he thought of that prediction? Yeah. He said, I stick by it. I still think we'll be done by the turn of the century. Yeah, it's right. a new century. Right. Uh, so right. I don't want to predict uh, right. you know, when, when that problem will be solved. I mean, I, I, I have faith that physicists will solve the problem. It's not beyond our capability. It might be because as physics moves forward, uh, mathematics gets more, more complicated and, and, and perhaps more difficult for the human mind. But maybe, maybe that's the wrong direction too. Maybe there's some brilliant uh, new Einstein or Newton will come along and, and find uh, the theory that, uh, that works that is not based on perhaps developing uh, the direction that we're going, but on some other mm -hmm. kind of mathematics. And I, I don't know. Uh, certainly there is a possibility that the beginning, whatever that may be, of our universe is not the beginning of everything because our universe might be just one of many universes and we're just looking at the local uh, timeline for our universe. Right, that's right. There might be other universes. I think most cosmologists today believe uh, that the theories uh, that are likely to succeed in the future do predict other universes, so we might just be one of many. Uh, but usually these are causally, not causally connected to ours, so uh, th that means that they have no effect on our universe. So uh, they're an interesting curiosity, but they're nothing that will uh, uh, have any effect. Well, on, unless on our, our universe is a, is a bubble or spin-off of, of an earlier universe, then it, we may not be able to... still doesn't mean that they're causally connected, but... Uh, well, not anymore, but, but if we, we were... Uh, that the, the Big Bang of our universe was a product of some other activity as opposed to unique in itself. Yeah, so there's, there's all kinds of different uh, theories. But I have to, I, I, okay, if we're talking about multiverses, I have to say this, that some people think that the multiverse is a th theory that physicists came up with uh, to explain the, way, the, the fine tuning of our universe and the way our universe seems to, to be very suited to us. And I wanna make it clear that these multiverses, no, no one sat down and said, I'm gonna come up with a multiverse theory but the multiverse idea popped out of different theories that people were working on for other reasons. And then they said, ah, this predicts a multiverse. So the multiverse is a prediction. It's not a theory that we seek to, to develop for ulterior motives. So I have to give that disclaimer because <laughs> right, right, right. that's often misunderstood. So what are the implications for the beginning, though? What, what does that mean about the beginning of our universe? How, how, how then do you answer the question, did our universe have a beginning? Well, my answer to the question is that it, not, it didn't have a beginning in the usual sense because you can't trace time back that far, and it doesn't. The, the question doesn't mean anything. But the, the idea of whether there are other universes or, or what the vacuum state of the universe is, or you know, we, we don't really know. So you know, we don't know. We don't have a theory of quantum gravity, so we really can't trace things back um, as far as we would like to. But you, whether time has a different meaning or not, we still can't. Uh, but you, you do get back to the small, very, very small part of the first second mm -hmm. where the universe is, is well, fruit-sized, whether it's a, whatever it is. A, yeah. a cherry or a grapefruit <laughs> or something smaller. It's, it, it's, it's very small. And even it, it, earlier, that it, it's, it's, it's far smaller than that. It's very microscopic in size. Well, in general you relativity get, tells you you can get back to as small as you want. Yeah. It starts from a point. But right. uh, no, 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 quantum no. theory tells us we can't quite look back that far. Right, right. But you get it back that far, but, but so, so th that's your beginning, which you're saying you can't get past that beginning to, to a, another beginning, but you can get back to that, where the universe is, is smaller well, we can than get something back we to, can and, see. And what we can get back to with fair amount of confidence, at least, is to the period of inflation. And we seem to understand a lot about the universe back to and that. And that's the billion, That's billion. not the beginning. I mean, for most people, maybe that's close enough to the beginning. <laughs> I mean, to me, the fascinating thing is that, okay, that, that, that before inflation, the universe was homogeneous, like everything was put in the blender and stirred up. It mm -hmm. wasn't really put in, it started yeah, yeah. in the blender state. And, yeah. and with time, it formed the clumps. Yeah. That's the, 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 the miracle of inflation, uh, is to show that is quantum microscopic quantum fluctuations right. of this homogeneous goop mm. turn into clusters of galaxies and galaxies and stars, and then we can look at, at the uh, at the structure of the large scale structure of the universe and see the 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 exactly the 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 um, 
mathematical expression in the large that resulted from those small fluctuations and it matches up. Mm. That is just amazing. Mm. And, and you know, to me, that's, that, you know, that is our origin.